Hello everyone, I wanted to do another video today to share some of my writing um, because that's what we do now here in lockdown we make videos and we write stuff and uh, apparently we now do belly dance courses uh, which is what I've just uh, done my first belly dance workout on YouTube um, which was fun um, a bit of a surprise to the general muscles that they're moving at all um, yeah, so I've been doing um, Napo, or Napo Remo, um, so if you don't know, April is National Poetry Writing Month, um, it's a bit like Nano Remo, which is in November, so you challenge yourself to write a 50,000 word novel in November, um, so Napo is challenging yourself to write one poem every day. Um, so, so far it's been pretty good. It also ties in with a conversation I had with my PhD supervisor where we decided that what I should do uh, this month uh, in between our supervisions um, is to just have some fun with writing something else. Um, so my PhD is on um, the positive benefits of poetry writing for cancer survivors. Um, and a lot of my poetry is well, some, some of my poetry is still uh, about cancer survivorship and uh, different issues related to that. But recently I've not been writing very much about that at all. And I've really been writing about it for the last eight, between eight to ten years. Um, so I feel a little bit like I want to write about something else for a change. Um, which, which I've done in the past anyway, you know, it's not just been sort of constant constant sort of cancer poetry outpourings. Um, but more, more recently I have felt like I, I just don't want to write about that. I've just, I've written enough for now um, and I just want to do something else. So Napo has really sort of tied into that where I'm trying to write different things every day. Um, I did Napo last year. Um, but I got a bit lazy with it and I kept using sort of the same sort of uh, techniques and things um, and I was just sort of really half-hearted about it, starting off with good intentions but it's a bit like Nano when you, you sort of start off really well steaming ahead and then you get two weeks in or maybe even less than that and you know it really sort of starts to starts to drag and you run out of inspiration and time and all that sort of thing. Um, so I wanted to share today some poems uh, and one non-poem, it's not cheating, it's just different, um, that I've been working on this month. Um, I've been wanting to just play around with different things and play around with form um, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to read two poems and uh, my other prose thing which I'll explain. Um, so one of them is another Covid poem, I'll do that first. Feel free to skip if, and fast forward a bit if you're like oh god not more Covid content. Um, and I, I did say on, on Twitter a little while ago, uh, oh really I don't want to talk about it, I don't want to hear about it, um, but apparently I do want to write about it still, a little bit. Um, so it's only, only the second sort of Covid related uh, poem that I've written um, but yeah I I did say that I didn't I wasn't going to sort of talk about it but then here we are um, sometimes you just need to um, but it came off um, sort of feelings that I've been having and also conversations that I've seen happening and, and been having um, about how uh, cancer survivors are getting on during coronavirus. A um, bit different depending on whether you're sort of still in active treatment or not um, and sort of whether you've had chemo and that sort of thing as to um, sort of what your situation is if you're a cancer survivor uh, during Covid um, because if like you've had chemo then you might be in a category of people who are vulnerable and need to stay inside for longer um, or like me um, 16 months post-surgery no chemo um, just follow-ups um, 
not in a high risk category. Um, so yeah, it's it's different for everybody. But I, my takeaway from COVID has been that there are similarities between having cancer and the current situation, specifically for me, um, post surgery. Um, and sort of having to stay inside, not being able to drive my car, seeing people on social media who are spending time in quarantine with their children. Um, and of course I had a hysterectomy. Um, so that's, that's a, a, a point. Um, <laughs> don't really know what to say about that, uh, but you know, what needs to be said anyway. Um, I'm going to stop waffling on about that and uh, about coronavirus and everything. I'm just going to read you the poem and then we'll be, uh, we can move on to things not related to that. <laughs> um, and again, yeah, I, I know I also said I'm, I'm not going to be writing about cancer and want to be writing about something else. But again, it infiltrates everything. So here we are. Um, so this is a bit of a strange poem because it's kind of in two parts so i started writing the first part which is called you don't um and then signed it off at the bottom of my poems i always say written on blah date at blah time don't know why it's just a habit i like to know when i wrote stuff um so i did that i was writing it in a, in a notebook so i wrote it wrote the poem um signed it off yep that's my poem done for today um and then I thought, hang on, no, no, we're not, we're not done actually, we're not done. Pick up your pen again um, and just keep writing. So I wrote like another chunk, like this second part of, uh, or this second poem, which is called Cancer Survivor Explains COVID. Um, and then signed it off with a new time and date and say, uh, said, okay, right now, now it's done. Um, so it's sort of in two halves and it's sort of two separate poems, but I'm treating it as one thing. Is that playing with form? I don't know, it's, it's something different. Um, so here we go, you don't slash cancer survivor explains COVID. Here we go. You don't. Grit and wit and feeling fit. No one's heard the last of it. It's fast paced numbness until you slow down. This is exactly like it and nothing like it. This is fighting and no, living and no, being brave and no, just being, sleeping a lot, trapped and not. You know when you don't, you don't, you don't. This is where we live, between existence and not, understanding and not, alone and not, mostly alone. You know when you don't, you don't, you don't. Cancer survivor explains COVID. I'm finished and not, wise and not, humble and not. I know a lot. This is my department. This fits in with everything I wrote and nothing I wrote. You know when you don't, no, you don't. How often do we become experts in the things we don't need to know, places we'd rather not go, emotions we'd rather not show. We are superior and not, the same and not, isolated and not, together and not, understood and not, and not, and not. This fits in with everything I wrote for a decade and hoped would go away. And for what? It's the same and it's not. We're the same and we're not. You know and you don't, you don't. You don't. The second poem that I'd like to read to you is called Inverse Volcano Haiku Zoomed In. Um, so I have a document um, where I put my ideas for poetry, uh, for poems, and it might be um, just a couple of words or an idea or uh, a few lines or one line um, so just little fragments of, of ideas um, and this document is like 50 pages long so there's quite a lot in it so what I've been doing during NAPO when I'm deciding what to write about that's not related to either of the C words um, is to sort of look at this document just sort of plot myself in to a random page and um, have a look at some of the ideas on there and see what jumps out at me um, and have a go at sort of expanding it and writing it and then that's a little bit satisfying because it means that I can take the idea out of the document, the document gets a tiny bit smaller um, and 
and yeah, it just gives me something uh, that's sort of half there, which is easier than sort of staring at a blank page. Um, so this poem comes from an idea that was in my poetry document um, and the lines were five or seven lines long, but mostly seven. Um, so I was thinking uh, traditional haiku is five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. Um, but I had more than, I had lots more seven syllable lines here. Um, and it's interesting as well with the poetry document because I can take things, uh, I can take a couple of different ideas and put, put them together um, in a way that I otherwise might not have. So it's really good to just sort of have sort of everything there so I can you know, search um, search for different words and sort of see what ideas might go together. Um, and this just so happened, it's a couple of different ideas that were sort of next to each other. I'm like, oh yeah, that's because um, I'd organised it at some point by category as well. Um, so some of it, some of it is organised. So some things are sort of in the same um, place, uh, sort of if they're around the same sort of idea. Um, so that was really helpful uh, with this. And again, just like really satisfying to uh, have two ideas find a home with each other. Um, yeah, it's really good. Um, so with this, I really liked the rhythm of sort of the seven syllable uh, lines. And I thought, well, I could do sort of a version of a haiku. So instead of doing 575, what I've done is uh, 777, 555, 7, 7, 7. So sort of inverse and made longer. So inverse volcano haiku zoomed in. So it's inverse because I've swapped the, the fives and the sevens around then zoomed in because, um, but it's just, it's all just, just longer and it feels bigger like as if you sort of zoomed into the haiku uh, so here we go inverse volcano haiku zoomed in is it dormant or extinct the news is always changing it has been over for years memories freeze in ash and i am pompeii patiently waiting life unrecognizable will it come back for seconds ash over ash over ash more discernible listener may notice that um, though I've, I've said that I'm not writing about cancer, this uh, could possibly be about cancer. I mean, I couldn't possibly uh, comment on uh, its relevance. Um, so yeah, um, so I really enjoyed sort of playing about with that. That was a fun thing to do. And then uh, the final thing, I'm just gonna show you a snippet of this or read you a snippet. Um, so I had the word decommissioning in my head um, don't really know where, where it came from. I was thinking decommissioning. Um, where, where's that come from? Why am I thinking of that? What what images does that conjure up? And it sort of conjured up an image of like an elevator being decommissioned. Uh, but as I did more research, sort of looking around, see like how this word was was used. Just just googling it to see what what context people use in this with. It's normally in terms of like nuclear reactors or oil refineries or platforms and that kind of thing, oil rigs. Um, so what I've done with this, it's a piece of prose, it's set out like an essay and it's, um, I've taken wording from different websites talking with, with the word decommissioning in them. So I think nearly every sentence has the word decommissioning in it. And I've just taken sentences from all these different uh, sources and put them into this essay format um, but I'm not thinking of decommissioning uh, as decommissioning a nuclear reactor um, I'm thinking of de decommissioning as uh, the title of this which is decommissioning of the womb um, and I know I'm talking about cancer again <laughs> I think I'm not writing about it and I am writing about it and then obviously I know that I'm in this case I'm definitely sort of writing about it or at least the effects of it uh, but then I kind of forget um, but because it's so, it feels more removed from the subject, um, which maybe is all that I can really ask for of, of myself is to, to write as far removed as possible, even if I'm sort of still writing about it. Um, yeah, so all of this is uh, sort of copied and pasted from 
different websites um i've got all of my sources listed in it so if i do sort of publish it then you know we'll have like the uh, the links in um or i might i don't know yet but i might go ahead and sort of change it all up into my own words um so that it is um less of a kind of curating if you like and, and more of a uh, original creating but i do think that it is um very much an original piece in the way that it's laid out and things are put together because uh it's all been completely repurposed um so here is decommissioning of the womb um so what i was trying to do with this is um sort of talk about de decommissioning uh, in the in the way that these sources have in terms of a nuclear reactor but i've put the heading in and sort of tried to just slightly place in the reader's mind um that this is about something completely different so i'm hoping that when people read it or listen to it um they will have that particular uh, topic in in their head instead of uh, sort of decommissioning as explained um, by these sources and about about their particular um, news. So here we go: decommissioning of the womb. The organ is a nuclear reactor. The body is the sea. All text taken from various sources. And I'll just read you the first couple of paragraphs. So decommissioning explained. When they have served their purpose and are retired, assets need to be decommissioned, just like any nuclear installation. Decommissioning is a dismantling, removal and disposal of the structures forming part of those assets and their associated infrastructure. Old decommissioned equipment and other items should be removed whenever possible. The decommissioning process can effectively be described as construction in reverse. How much decommissioning is happening? The growing number of ageing assets has resulted in increased decommissioning activity worldwide. The coming decommissioning wave is a significant opportunity for service providers and operators experienced in decommissioning and abandonment operations. Uh, so that's just like a little flavour. Um, why decommission? Operators may choose to decommission assets for a variety of reasons, such as the prohibitive cost of extending their lifetime for continuing operation. Not decommissioning idle assets or doing so improperly can result in their structural deterioration and an increased risk for people and the envi environment. When an asset completely gives in, it may be time to consider decommissioning. And in my head, it's just it's a little bit um i guess bizarre and sad to think of an organ especially a womb where life is supposed to grow um as something that's sort of been decommissioned just been sort of deactivated um as if it's an ob object or a piece of uh equipment um so i'll leave that there for now there is more but it is it's a few hundred words um so i just wanted to share uh, what i've been doing recently um and the different ways that i've been sort of playing around with things um so yeah thank you very much for watching and listening um let me know uh if you like it if you've been playing with um form and different ideas and things yourself um and i'll see you next time bye